वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स माई सेल्फ गजाला चवलकर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी एन इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक दैट इज अबाउट दी ओशंस एज ओशन वाटर इज कॉन्स्टेंटली मूविंग नॉट ओनली इन द फॉर्म ऑफ वेव्स एंड टाइड्स बट ओशंस फ्लो लाइक अ वास्ट रिवर्स स्विपिंग अ लॉन्ग प्रोडक्टेबल पाथ्स सम ओशन फ्लो एट द सर्फेस वाइल अदर्स डीप विद इन दी वॉटर सम फ्लो for short distance others cross entire ocean basins and even circle the globe our topic for today will be chapter number 5 that is ocean currents module 1 so students let us know our learning objectives for today our learning objectives for today is introduction to ocean currents the world's ocean water are in constant movements which are caused by solar radiation and there are three main types of water movements which are there on the earth surface that is the wind waves tides and ocean currents so we are going to see what is ocean currents and then we are also going to see the classification of ocean currents on the basis of temperature that is warm currents and cold currents then factors which have impact on the formation of ocean currents that is temperature or rotation planetary winds land salinity etc then oceans also affects the weather and climate the one way that is the world's oceans affect weather and climate is by playing an important role in keeping our planet warm students let us recall when does any material flow any material flows when force is applied on it next one what happens exactly when it flows when the material flows it gets transferred from one place to another place which animal is in the material is responsible for the initiation of the flow so temperature is responsible for the initiation of the flow A students here we have an activity try out this the materials which are required for the activity are a large metal tray water spirit lamp plastic sequins note the following activity should be carried out by students under the supervision of parents or adults keep the large metal tray on a stand fill it with water after the water becomes still leave the sequins in them after some times the sequins will start floating in the water and become still too now observe all these things After some time light the spirit lamp and place it below one corner of the tray Now students what did you observe So we observe that as the temperature of the water increases the plastic sequins move from one place to another As the result as the temperature rises the density of water decreases and it becomes lighter and therefore the water having lower temperature which is heavier replaces the water with higher temperatures after some time the sequins start moving in a circular motion there is a movement of these sequins because of the flow of water now based on this activity here we have few questions the first one is what did you understand initially by observing the sequence so by observing the sequence initially we understood that the sequence started floating in the water and became still when the temperature of water started increasing what changes did you see when the temperature of the water started increasing the plastic sequence moved from one place to another the density of water decreased and it became lighter 
therefore the water having lower temperature which was heavier replaced the water with higher temperatures observe the movements of the sequence so the sequence started moving in a circular motion what conclusions can be drawn from the same it can be concluded that there is a movement of sequence because of the flow of water where can such process takes place on the earth surface such process can take place in the oceans what are those process and why do they happen now those process are called as ocean currents they happen because of the differences in the temperature density planetary winds earth's rotations and continental structure the world's oceans water are in constant movements caused by solar radiation there are three main types of water movements that is wind waves tides and ocean currents so the term current means or describes the motion of the ocean an ocean current is a continuous directed movement of water which flows throughout the oceans of the earth the current is defined as a horizontal flow of sea water through the ocean just like a massive river flowing in the surface layers of the oceans and sea currents carry large masses of water some as big as 100 million liters per second their speed varies currents are caused by prevailing winds such as trade and anti trade winds blowing from one particular direction over on the surface of the earth depending upon their location classification of ocean currents on the basis of temperature so on the basis of temperature ocean currents have been classified into two categories that is warm currents and cold currents this is pretty straightforward that when the temperature of water in the current is higher than the temperature of water that surrounding it we speak of warm water currents now these currents flow from the equator towards higher latitudes and accordingly when the temperature of currents water is lower than the ocean surrounding it it is cold water currents now these flow from higher latitudes towards the equator as you can see in the picture students the red arrows they are warm ocean currents and blue arrows are the cold water currents ocean currents also carry a variety of organisms and nutrients with them this is only possible because of the up and down welling of the currents now upwelling is an oceanographic phenomena that is it is a process in which deep cold water rises towards the surface upwelling occurs in the oceans in the open oceans and along coastlines the reverse pattern is called the downwelling also occurs when wind causes surface water to build up along a coastline and the surface water eventually sinks towards the bottom now upwelling that is most of the ocean's organic matter is in its depth or on the sea floor now this causes an issue because of the vast majority of sea life is concentrated near the sunlit areas at the surface now when this currents upwell or flow up to the surface the currents bring vital nutrients with them for example like plankton amongst other things ride these currents up to the surface and are then eaten by more massive creatures now downwelling it is just as a crucial as upwelling for life to be sustained in the depths of the oceans it forces the ocean's rich surface water down towards the depth this provide oxygen rich waters for the creatures that dwell below the ocean surface without this renewal of oxygen rich water the dissolved oxygen in the bottom sediments will quickly be become used by decaying organic matter which would lead to a build up of hydrogen sulfide only a few creatures 
will survive these conditions. Now, let us understand which are the factors which impact the ocean currents formation. The first one is the level of salinity, then temperature, earth's rotation, planetary winds, land. Let us see all these factors in detail. The first one is the level of salinity. When we say salinity, that is the level of salinity, it means the amount of salt present in the water. Now salinity of sea is generally affected by the inflow of the fresh water from the rivers or melting ice and by rainfall or evaporation. Now waters of low salinity have lower density enabling them to flow on the surface of waters of high salinity while waters of high salinity flow at the bottom. Temperature The differential heating of the sun at the equator and the poles causes a difference in the temperature of ocean water. Temperatures are higher at the equator than the poles. Hence, the water in the ocean near the equatorial region is heated more than that near the poles. Now, this unequal heating sets up convectional currents in the oceans. The warm waters of the equatorial regions are light and more and move along the surface towards the polar region where they are cooled on the other hand the cold water is denser and heavier it sinks downwards from the surface and moves slowly towards the equator where on warming up it may rise to the surface again earth's rotation Students, as we know that the earth rotates from west to east, right? So, because of this, the earth's rotation produces a force on all bodies moving relative to the earth. So, as earth moves, all the moving bodies, that is winds and oceans, also moves. The force is greatest at the poles and least at the equator. Now, this is because of the earth's approximately spherical shape. This force is also called the Coriolis force or the Coriolis effect which causes the direction of winds and oceans currents to be deflected. That is, the ocean currents move in the clockwise direction in the northern hemisphere and in the anti-clockwise direction in the southern hemisphere. Next one is planetary winds. Now, planetary winds are also called as permanent winds. They also play a major role in the flow of the ocean currents. Now, these winds are of three types that is the trade winds, westerlies and polar easterlies and monsoon winds. Now, these winds blow from one pressure belt to the another. The oceanic circulation pattern roughly corresponds to the earth's atmospheric circular pattern. For example, now first one, trade winds, they blow between equator and tropics. These winds blow equatorial water polewards and westwards. Now westerlies, they blow in the temperate latitude and results in the northeasterly flow of water in the northern hemisphere and opposite in the southern hemisphere. Westerlies have an enormous impact on ocean currents, especially in the southern hemisphere they are responsible for transporting enormous volume of cold nutrient rich water to the ocean which healthy marine ecosystems and food webs monsoon winds the strongest influence of the prevailing winds on the flow of the ocean current is seen in the north indian ocean due to monsoon winds the direction of winds change from the southwest in summer and to the northeast in winters. Because over India, these are the two important winds that is southwest monsoon winds and northeast monsoon winds. 
Next one is the continental structure. Now, the land mass obstructs the flow of ocean currents and diverts its movement. It divides the ocean currents to flow in a different direction. Now, students, as you can see here in the picture A and picture B. According to the alignment of the coastlines, the direction of the ocean currents changes. Students, here we have the map showing the distribution of toys in the ocean. A very strange incident occurred in the Pacific Ocean in the year 1992. A cargo ship sailed towards America from Hong Kong while traveling through the Pacific Ocean. Near the Hawaii Islands, a container full of toys fell into the ocean and broke. Around 28,000 rubber toys started floating on the ocean. Now, this incident occurred on 10th of January 1992. Now, a strange thing happened. After around 10 months on 16th of November 1992, some of the, these toys reached the coast of Alaska. Some of them crossed the Bering Street and moved up to the Arctic Ocean by the near 2000. And some of them also floated to the Atlantic Ocean from the Arctic. Some of these reached the eastern coast of America in 2003. And some of the toys had even reached the European coast by 2007. From the Hawaii Islands, some of the toys took route to Australia. Now, students... Why this? Why did the toys travel in this way? So these toys traveled this way because they were swept by currents and due to the differences in the temperatures, salinity and speed of the planetary wind, the toys moved from one, they were transferred from one place to the another. One way that world's ocean affects weather and climate is by playing an important role in keeping a planet warm. The majority of radiation from the sun is absorbed by the ocean, particularly in tropical waters around the equator, where the ocean gets acts like a massive heat-retaining solar panel. Land areas also absorb some sunlight, and the atmosphere helps to retain heat that will otherwise quickly radiate into space after sunset. Ocean water is constantly evaporating, increasing the temperature and humidity of the surrounding air to form rain and storms that are then carried out by trade winds. In fact, almost all rain that falls on the land starts off in the ocean. Outside of Earth's equatorial areas, weather patterns are largely driven by ocean currents. The ocean currents act much like a conveyor belt, transporting warm water and precipitation from the equator towards the pole and cold water from the poles back to the tropics. Thus, ocean currents regulate global climate, helping to counteract the uneven distribution of solar radiation reaching the Earth's surface. Without currents in the ocean, regional temperatures would be extreme, that is super hot at the equator and frigid towards the poles. So students, let us have a quick recap of what we have learned today. We learned that any material flows when the force is applied on it and when these materials flow, it is transferred like it gets transferred from one place to the another place. Similarly, ocean currents are formed due to differences in temperature, salinity and planetary winds. And what are ocean currents? Ocean currents is a continuous directed movement of water which flows throughout the oceans of the earth. The currents is defined as a horizontal flow of sea water through the ocean just like a massive river flowing in the surface layer of the oceans and seas. We studied the classification of ocean water that is on the basis of temperature. It is classified into warm currents and cold currents. Now what is warm currents students here? Warm currents are basically the warm waters which is basically seen in the equatorial region. When the temperature of water is water in the current is higher than the temperature of the water that surrounding it is the warm water currents. 
and these currents basically flow from the equator towards the higher latitudes and cold currents are when the temperature of the current water is lower than the ocean surrounding it it is the cold water current and these water currents flow from the higher latitudes to the equator and because of these currents we have upwelling and downwelling of the ocean waters upwelling and downwelling is an oceanographic phenomena upwelling is a process in which deep cold water rises towards the surface on the other hand the reverse process that is called the downwelling also occurs when wind causes surface water to build up along a coastline and the surface water eventually sinks towards the bottom we also learn the factors which have impact on the formation of ocean currents that is the level of salinity that is the salt content in the ocean water depending upon temperature rotation of the earth planetary winds and land and lastly we saw the influence of ocean currents on weather and climate ocean water is constantly evaporating increasing the temperature and humidity of the surrounding air to form rain storms that are then carried by trade winds in fact almost all rain that falls on the land starts off in the ocean outside of earth's equatorial areas weather patterns are largely driven by ocean currents thank you students for listening and watching the video i hope that you like my video thank you very much